Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. On this week's show, we're excited to have as our special guest, Saram Krishnan. Saram is the SVP of Product and Partnerships and Marketing at Headspin, and he was previously the Head of International Growth at Tinder, the Head of New Markets at Spotify. Saram has started, scaled, and sold technology companies, and is an active angel investor. Hi, Siriam and Dave, a warm welcome to you both. It's exciting to have you all on the C-Suite show this week. It's great to be back, Brad. Hello, Brad. Hi guys. In this week's show we'll be talking about why is the customer experience central in this day and age of the internet and how do you think the C-suite should ensure customers actually feel that way? I think that's over to you, Dave. Yeah, I mean, it's everything, right? It's ultimately, if I'm going to judge a business, it used to be on customer service, it used to be on their behavior in terms of interactions with me me, me and humans, and now it's really kind of interaction with uh with them in terms of their digital presence, you know, mobile and, and uh, you know, web-based and, and, you know, all the other stuff that's going on today. I mean, I, I you know, thinking about this, I, I ha haven't talked to an airline rep in probably five years, but I fly every week and I'm able to change flights. I'm able to modify uh, my seats. I'm able to do lots of things that I had to do through a human being. And I typically judge them based on the attitude and the helpfulness of that human being. Now I judge them based on the ability for my application to really kind of delight me in terms of how they're going to configure my user experience or flying on an airplane. So what I'd love to hear from our guests is, you know, ultimately, you know, how does a business, you know, how do the uh, CEOs and the CTOs and the CIOs, you know, kind of ensure that this kind of delight will occur now and into the future? Yeah, I mean, that's a great point. I mean, if you think about it, like attention span these days is a currency. Right, and and users expect your web presence to be obviously to your point to delight you to delight them. Users expect uh, your web presence to be smooth and to be clean and to be as simple as it gets. Um, so the, when when you're competing for the share of voice or a share of year uh, for time, it's essential that the basic tenets of your internet setup, your digital presence setup is up to mark. What organizations can do uh, to establish uh, a very consistent service uh, on, on their digital fronts, whether it's social media, whether it's app, whether it's web, is to, 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 to sort of introduce two or three different things into the organization. So what are these things? At a high level, you need to have uh, this, if you're in retail, if you're, if customer customer service is, is is a priority for you, then you need to sort of reintroduce what customers' experience is in the mobile world. So you have to break that down into clear and concise metrics. Uh, whether it's time it takes to load your app, time it takes to make a purchase. So you need to pro, you need to sort of break down what customer experience means into lower into smaller targets. Now in the in the web world, it's completely different, right? So so that's that's one. I'm trying to make make sure that your customer experience KPI, so to speak, uh, are always uh, uh, thought of and prioritized. The second thing is um, this can be done through hiring or through partnerships, but make sure that you hire or partner with the right organizations that have a track record of uh, of whether it's being close to the customer from a digital perspective or who've serviced internet customers. Um, it's, the reason why I say this is because um, the, the, the internet, unlike real world, is, 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 is very different, obviously, but it also, it, it's also a sink or swim situation, right? If your app doesn't load in eight seconds, then you lose your customer. In the real world, if, if, if the bank teller makes you wait for eight, eight seconds, you're good, you're fine, right? So having people who, who, are, who, who, who are accustomed to building um, applications for the masses, uh, uh, partners who are used to delivering uh, uh, projects or, 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 or processes 
to uh, to the mainstream internet audience is crucial because they, they then bring in that sort of thinking that you need to rejuvenate your organization into a more sort of mobile centric or customer centric um, uh, uh, mode, right? And the last thing I would say is if you're a CIO or a CTO and you and you sort of want to want to want to improve your customer experience better is 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 to dog food your own product and this is as simple as uh i mean back in the day i remember there used to be spot checks done at retail outlets uh as a way to figure out whether or not the line uh, uh, moves fast with five uh tellers or four tellers right so how do you do that in in the, in the internet world well for example at hitspin one of the main things we do is we allow people to test their apps in multiple different scenarios now you don't necessarily have to do that uh you could you could basically dog food your app in different locations so you could you sort of do that at many different stages of your app development or your web development so i mean at the end of the day if i were to re- sort of recap this it's it's break down your top customer priorities uh, in accordance to new age web metrics that are related to the internet. Uh, hire and work with people who have delivered to the mass internet audience because uh, a delivery and, and experience is very important. And lastly, uh, make sure that you stay as close as you can to the customer by dog fooding your product uh, in, a, in a sort of very independent and isolated uh, situation. So if you're in, in an elevator with a CEO or a CIO or a CTO or a CFO, and they're asking you like one of the top three things that you need to pay attention to in terms of their ability to kind of have digital enablement practices that are able to, you know, kind of get them through the next five to 10 years, what would you tell them? I would tell them that it's essential that they understand that whatever web presence they have, and it, it should be tailored. Okay, let me take a step back. There's no such thing as an average internet user, right? There's no such thing as an average internet user. These days you're dealing with loads of combinations. Now you have, you have network, you have different uh, telco carrier networks, you have different CDN edges that's serving the customers, different locations, different phones and devices, different app versions. So this, explosion of combinations have basically enabled the app or app developers to have have forced them to deal with to, to make sure that the app works in every different scenario every different condition but the unfortunate re- reality is most apps don't even work for a sizable portion of that combinations so what what i would tell them to do is to make sure first and foremost that their web presence or their mobile presence serves and caters to everyone. And the way the way they can do this is to understand what or where the end users are, whether they're using Telstra, Optus, uh, whether they're on iPhone, whether they're on Samsung, and, and, and to make sure that their web app or their mobile app works perfectly for all these different types of combinations. So uh, it's very easy for me to say this, uh, and but it's very hard. It's harder to implement this. You obviously need to um, to to make sure that your I mean app works across different dimensions. Blah blah blah. So, but but that's that's the one thing I would say. There's no such thing as average user anymore. Back in the day, CIO, CTO, CEOs, when they do the back of the envelope envelope calculation on on how much would it cost to invest in a project that would cater to X, Y, and Z, it used to be very straightforward. But nowadays, it's not as straightforward because you have all these different uh, niches of internet audiences that are your customers, and how do you personalize your offering? Uh, how do you make sure that your app is catering to all? So I would say personalization and making sure that your app caters or your web app or your mobile app caters to everyone is, I would, I would say, the two, two, two pieces of advice I would give. Yes, yeah, so, so Brad, a question for you. I mean, these skills are almost rare as hen's teeth, as we say here in the state. So how would enterprises go about finding the right skills to make these things happen? That's a great question, and, and you're right, the, the skills are lacking, although there are transferable skills out there which we all know about, which people can do, and I think, but it, it comes back to a, a, a point that you and I spoke about several weeks ago, Dave, is that identifying the outputs of why an organization is looking for these skilled individuals to, and what they can offer to the, the product that they're trying to deliver to offer that uh, customer-centric app and, and identifying 
why they're bringing on a team of people and what skills those people actually need only based on what the company's requirements are and what the, the outputs they're expecting to get. So I think if we strip it back to what the customer, uh, what the, the company needs are, they're going to identify the, the type of person they're going to need with regards to transferable skills. Uh, and making sure that the company can identify not only the personal experience within the app um, world, because the app world and the internet world are two different platforms and behaviours obviously are two different platforms. Behaviours differ as well and I think if the, the client doesn't understand the customer behaviour within an app comparatively to the experience or the, the um, behaviours online on a browser for argument's sake, it's going to be very difficult for the intuitive um, behaviours to be uh, put into place. So you, you're going to get the wrong team in if you can't identify how the app behaviors are from a, um, a customer point of view. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I think ultimately, uh, uh, you know, this is kind of a new science. And I think we're just defining it. And I think we're, you know, it's very much like cloud was back in 2006, that we know we need it. Uh, we know the concept of what it is, but we haven't kind of broke it down into its primitive functions and technologies and how to build things forward. So maybe our guests can give us some advice in terms of how customers or clients or uh, C-levels need to look at this stuff moving forward. Yeah, I think um, there's, there are various frameworks out there to, to, to look at. Um, the, most, the most common one, I think, was created by uh, Facebook or Google, I forget. And, and their mantra basically is, um, um, delight, delight the end user, and their definition of delight, obviously internally, when you, when you break it down, is ensure that the Facebook experience or the Google experience is consistent across the world for all mobile and web products. Um, I agree with your point about how uh, web, uh, uh, the, the sort of the whole mobile channel um, and and process is still pretty uh, in its early days. Um, it's still a wild west out there from a mobile development perspective. We see that a lot of, um, uh, there are about six, 12 million developers out there. Um, and I would say um, at a high level, if, if you aren't uh, able to empathize with your customer's uh, use, uh, pain point or, or use case, then you're toast. So uh, I would say just go back to the basics uh, whether it's again your mobile channel or your web channel, um, figure out if your channel in itself is solving a problem, and if it's not, then uh, f figure out what the problem is and how you can solve it. Uh, and if it is solving a problem, how can you extract the most time uh, and engagement from that from that channel? Um, so that's what I would say. No, I think that's good advice. So, uh, Brad, back to you. So, the the advice to see uh, C levels is learn this stuff, hire for this stuff, or you're going to be toast. I think that was a, what our guest said, and I entirely believe that to be true. I think if people don't get this, their businesses go away in the next five to ten years. So, figure it out now and learn and uh, and get it underway. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're you're, you're both one hundred percent right. It really is. If you if you can't identify the behaviours of your of your clients or the problems they're about to have in the app world uh, as opposed to the browser world, and you can't remedy that in a way that's going to save them time, you're you're toast. And and it's I don't know, uh, Siram. Go back to your your point of saying who coined the phrase. The aim was to delight, whether it was Facebook or Google. From what I understand, Google said the, their main slogan was "Don't be evil." So I don't know whether they've changed it to, to delight now. What, what are your thoughts on that one? Oh, no, no, no. It was, uh, don't be evil was their public facing motto. But obviously, I mean, if you look at Facebook internally, it used to be break fast, move, th move fast and break, th and, and break things. Uh, but, but internally, if you look at the various teams in Google or Facebook, I've got friends who work there. Uh, at the end of the day, it's about making sure the customers engage and delighted by the, by the Facebook experience or the Google experience or the Twitter experience, right? So... Uh, obviously, you have a public-facing motto, and then you have internal-facing sort of uh, uh, guide, guide, guide guideline. But uh, but move fast and break things. I, I think I quite I quite like. Uh, it just shows that uh, it shows a make make progress. It, like whether it's incremental progress, or exponential progress, it doesn't matter as long as you're moving forward. A lot of the times, you're finding within sort of large enterprises, you move one step forward, three steps back, 
two steps forward, two steps back, and you're not actually doing anything. Uh, but but if you sort of uh, embrace the move fast, break things um, motto of Facebook, then hopefully that should allow you to uh, think faster and, and move, uh, move faster. Absolutely. And in fact, Dave and I talk about, you know, acting fast and failing fast is one of the best ways to, to get to market and, and move to market. But um, yeah, no, I think I think Google have actually removed their motto now. Don't be evil. Um, I think that 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 happened that happened last week or something. I don't know. But it was uh, it, it made me, it made me smile either way. <laughs> the fact that they, they thought they could be evil in the first place with all this data was quite concerning. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks for being part of the C-Suite show. I thought I'd end it on a bit of a funny note there. As always, excuse my sense of humor. Saram, it's been great having you on the C-Suite show. Thanks very much. Thank you. And Dave, again, thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week. It's always a pleasure, Brad. Thanks to our guest. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, you've been, you've been awesome. And thanks for watching, everyone. We do hope you've enjoyed watching this week's C-Suite show. Um, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the show so you don't miss out on the future shows. And also, you can get everyone on Twitter. And I've put all the links below in the description box. And take care and look forward to next week. Thanks for watching. <laughs>